Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Okay, so this is Caddy Jack's Knits. I am Jackie. Caitlin is in Knoxville, Tennessee. We can't wait to see her. And in the meantime, look who we have here. <laughs> Melissa Jenkins. <laughs> Yay. I should link in the show notes below all the other... Is it only one other time or two other times you've been on the podcast? I think one other time. My jewelry has been on the podcast. Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> but okay. um, I think January 2020 was the last time oh, I was on. Okay, so it's been three years or two and a half years? Yeah. Wow. A well, lifetime, it feels wow. like. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Are you still selling jewelry? I am. I mean, do you want to come in close for them oh, to see sure. what you're wearing? Beautiful. Little coral tassel earrings. Very nice. Yes. I, I, you know, you all, your jewelry is for sale on your website. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed it's for sale at Pittsburgh Mercantile, it too. It is, When yes. I have Pittsburgh Hi, Mercantile <laughs> earrings on today. Oh. I put them on to, like, you know. Oh, yeah. It looks great. Yeah. I love it. Okay, great. <laughs> so, happy November. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are... I invited Melissa here today to talk about color. And... Um, but before we talk about color, I wanted to give her the opportunity. We have Amy Pelko was visiting too, and we had our poetry advent. And this is our special book now of um, where we can just dip in and find a poem. Mm -hmm. So will you open the book and I will share the poem? Oh my gosh. Just anywhere. Okay. Yes. In the universe. Which yes. Poem should I? Yes. This <laughs> Okay. All right. So it's this beautiful bouquet of flowers and then also a medieval duke on a journey I've uh, okay it's not focused yet but look at that it doesn't want to focus <laughs> oh there now it focused anyways and the poem is an anonymous English poem this is the key this is the key of the kingdom in that kingdom is a city, in that city is a town, in that town there is a street, in that street there winds a lane, in that lane there is a yard, in that yard there is a house, in that house there waits a room, in that room an empty bed, and on that bed a basket, a basket of sweet flowers, of flowers, of flowers, a basket of sweet flowers, flowers in a basket, basket on the bed, Bed in the chamber, chamber in the house, house in the weedy yard, yard in the winding lane, lane in the broad street, street in the high town, town in the city, city in the kingdom. This is the key of the kingdom, of the kingdom. This is the key. I love that. Mm. I couldn't help thinking that whole time how much it reminded me of knitting. Mm. And this is the key of the kingdom and like the whole like, broad and then we flash in and this is the skein of the yarn on the bed this mm. is the key of the kingdom this one's gain like mm. for, for all of this opportunity for self-expression i love that yes. i kept thinking of good night moon oh <laughs> yes <laughs> because of my two kids <laughs> yes well it, it was a poem that went you know like out yeah. to in and right. then in like and good back night out good night chair yeah they say that. and and actually valuing the material, the details of mm. your life and how they express themselves, that's the key. The, mm. I feel, mm -hmm. don't you? Yes. Absolutely. So like a single skein. Um, let's just talk about a single skein right off the bat because I just want to mention, will you grab one of each of those skeins? Um, so you and I both have knit with knit collage, yes. right? Mm. And so one of the things I wanted to have you on here for is I'm doing the knit collage make along and Caitlin has already made this beautiful oh, Ryan Beck so cardigan great. with the collar but I have not yet and so here's the skein and it grows into um, a sweater and then a way of being and moving through the world and literally I'm gonna just say this how you move through the world like how you feel impacts how the world you know, comes back mm -hmm. at you and you just mm -hmm. perpetually are a change agent 
if you go out into the world feeling amazing, absolutely, it makes a complete difference. <coughs> so, Excuse me. no, it's <coughs> totally okay. We are we are geared with water and <laughs> handkerchiefs and all the things. It's the October sixth. So, one of this is just a very common dilemma, and we're going to just start with like I thought we'd start with like let's pretend that you haven't even had because we're going to go into some more detail about what all of this goodness is behind <laughs> us but let's just pretend that you have two choices in front of you and can you just talk through recommending kind of like um you're going back and forth between two what would you suggest doing first and foremost um first and foremost having your colors done <laughs> 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 right, but but for but our viewers today, we're going to go there. Yeah, yes. I would say um, ask yourself some questions about what the type of garment is that you're going to make. Like, how you want to feel in it, mm -hmm. what you want to project in it. Yes. Like, do you want something that's calm? Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. It's okay. Um, maybe neutral, obviously. Something that will go with more pieces in your closet, um, or do you want to make more of a statement? Do you want something that's maybe out of your comfort zone? Um, yeah, either one in that cardigan is going to make a statement, but I think this one is a little bit more impactful in terms of a statement. This one might be a little safe. Mm, okay, so do you? Um, <coughs> I am so sorry. No, it's okay. Do you need some water? I'll, t I'll take another okay. drink. <laughs> While she's having some water, I'm going to put it on. So the, what I heard from you, because like I do want everyone to get their colors done, of course, but <laughs> but if they're just viewing and they want to yes. start. Yes. So um, when you, should you like put something that has no color so it doesn't interact? Oh, should sure. Should I put this yarn on and then like put something white around me? Sure, I see what you're saying. Like just to like look at uh, like yes. what you feel, how you feel in the color. Yeah, yeah. Like should yeah. I go? Should I get something white sure. right now? All right, I'll grab my nightgown. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, how pretty! Thanks, thanks. Okay, so okay, so we have this on. What do and then what do we look for? Well, I mean, there are lots of different things that you can look for in your features. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you look for like how bright someone's eyes might be. Mm -hmm. um, oh, mean, look at that! Right, it did. It did. I right. feel like it made a positive change to um, have this color. Yeah. Yes, I agree. I agree. Right. Okay. So look at your eyes. Yeah. Is there can, any other place you want to look? Um. Sometimes your lips. Oh. You can okay. Look there. Okay. Um. Well, and just an overall like. Does the church, does does the color give you life mm -hmm. or does it take away? Like okay, okay. So let's do the other one, All right. and then we'll choose together which one. Ooh, I mean, this yarn is so pretty. It's so sparkly. It is very special. Yeah. See all that sparkle. Which for a lot of people that would be taking a risk, right? To have some metallic in their um, colors. I love neutrals, so I'm not. I'm okay. not against neutrals at all. Okay. Oh. But it's so interesting mm -hmm. because I don't think this one did anything really for me. I mean, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. I think the other one's just better. Mm -hmm. So that's often like with um, with House of Color, with the color analysis, like I will never tell people not to wear a color mm -hmm. except for maybe black. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but even that one, I won't say don't wear it, mm -hmm. but I will say this is better this looks better and then we can kind of see in the face why it looks better um right like looking at like darker under eye circles like does it make you look more tired or more mm. awake mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. which i think we don't i, I never thought about that before. right or i'm often concerned with how a color looks with my hair for whatever oh, reason oh sure and no that's skin. totally valid like the most important part when you're dealing with color is what we call your cameo area yeah so your hair is a part of that and like right. your natural hair color will never be wrong right um but some dyes will help you to to look your best and yeah. some might um hold you back a little well i'm and the same with yarn so I'm going to tell you a common problem that I have had okay. in my knitting life is I love 
this seems to me like it like looking at it it's all like warm and gold mm -hmm. and like soft and peachy mm -hmm. and to me that's exactly what I'm drawn to <laughs> yes I would love this hair. but it's hard <laughs> to find the right shade mm -hmm. of because there are neutrals for me that really work and some that don't sure so that so the full color analysis um, when you're getting into the nuance especially I find the lighter the color the harder for me to decide a saturated oh, sure. color is easier but harder color yeah um, so so in this one in this case I'm gonna make it out of this and because um, I just think you're right mm -hmm. it's it's funny though because I'm just gonna say um, I thought this would be more dramatic because of all the sparkle mm -hmm. and all the mixed colors and sure. everything like that sure but just and this is just well this has a little sparkle it has silver sparkle right. mm. okay <laughs> <laughs> but this one is actually more dramatic mm -hmm. um, on me it serves you more like we can just see how you pop like I see Jackie there. I mean even though I'm in shadow Right, right. True. I mean, even this side. Right, this side is in shadow. Yeah, because if we go over here, and we might have to fix the blind, because, yeah. But it it does. I it just clearly you does. You see it. Yeah, I see it too. Mm -hmm. So, so that is the first order of business. Is I need to knit this up. Oh, oh, you you don't have to wind it or anything <laughs> like that. But um, this is the dilemma we have all the time, mm -hmm. and so. Um, one of the ways that you can do this then I guess is definitely take the things out of the ball put them on your drape mm -hmm. them on yourself with a white cloth and and literally look at two colors at the same time just mm -hmm. go back and forth with the two colors mm -hmm. and and decide so that means you need to go to a yarn shop or you need to order twice as much as you thought and you know so many yarn companies have generous exchange policies and whatnot I, I can't say, I can't quote knit collages, but I know I can trade that out for sure, something that sure. flatters me more. And so a lot of our um, yarn shopping is online, so, mm -hmm. you know, and it just makes all the difference in the world. The difference between, this is something, a common thing knitters face is the the yarn on the screen versus the yarn in there. Oh my hands. gosh, yes. Which is why I'll say this right away. There are so many virtual color analysis out there right now. Oh. And they are just absolutely subpar. Oh. <laughs> because every screen views things differently. Like yeah. how what we're seeing right now and what you guys are seeing is probably very different. Well, not very different, but you know, there's subtleties. And when you're looking at the face, mm -hmm. there are subtleties that in person we look at that are just not able to be seen on a screen. So I went ahead and had my colors done yes. by Melissa. And do you and in the do you wanna like in brief say what the process is or yeah. do you want me to say what my well, experience was? I'll show this lovely color wheel first. Oh, off. okay. Um I love this poetry. Okay, so this is how we start all of our color appointments. There's this beautiful color wheel. Um and we talk a little bit about Johannes Itten. He is kind of the father of color theory. Um, he went. He was a professor at the Bauhaus School of Art in Germany in like the twenties. Um, and okay. you keep talking. then with World War II, that they, him and his cohorts kind of um, f fell apart, went all over the world, and then when Hollywood. Uh, came into color TV, color movies, uh, the importance of color analysis and the different colors kind of came back into the limelight because um, producers and directors were noticing that each day when they were filming, people would look more tired or they'd look more alive, more awake. Um, uh, they'd just show up differently and they noticed it was based on their hair color, their makeup, and their clothing so it was and you can see that even today like the hero's journey um, people use like the psychology of color which Johanna Sitton also talked about a lot um, and how going through that story they will put 
different clothing and makeup on people to show and emphasize whatever they're trying to portray through the screen, whether that's like someone going through a really rough time and being really um, worn out or tired, they'll put you know colors that maybe aren't their best on them. So once you see it, now you, you won't be able to unsee it, um, just to notice those changes. So I guess that's some homework. See if you can notice that in some, some stories. But anyway, and then we figure oh, out... Oh, I want to quick say oh, something. Oh, sure. Yep. I, I, the whole time that I've um, interacted with you, I've, I've had this quote in my head, and it is from Joseph Albers, who is also a color theorist, Ooh. but I confused him with Itten. And it's, in order to use color effectively, it is necessary to recognize that color deceives continually. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And you have to send me that. Yeah, I love that <laughs> because I, I and I, I hope this segues with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But you always have to set one color next to another color, and there, it, it, it shows it reveals one thing that it maybe wouldn't reveal by itself mm -hmm. so i feel Absolutely. like color is a like a, a light spectrum version of a metaphor it, it is never the thing itself right it oh, just I love that <laughs> it, oh yeah so you really um isn't that a metaphor for life yes it's not prose working with color mm -hmm. it's poetry mm. Right? Oh. You're you're yes. not just saying something, you're you're creating an experience. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. A feeling. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so those those encounters that they notice, those things they notice, they're noticing the poetic expression of color mm. rather than just the, you mm. know, you know, slap some paint on a wall right. version of it. And how they interact together. Yeah. Because that is absolutely what like Johannes Itten did. He put these colors into four categories based yes. on how they interact with each yes. other versus I think it was Isaac Newton previously that did the um, original color wheel but it wasn't categorized by any way shape yes. or form it was just the spectrum right so yes and yes yes and yes. I, I would say if you are going to be a poet you're going to read poetry you're going to take pay attention to language mm. you're going to be alert to imagery you're going to be alert to sound and mm. if you are going to have color be something that it really is intentional in mm -hmm. your life you I mean you there's no passive way to go about it mm. it's it's an invitation to step into being really deliberate intentional. but mm -hmm. an intentional mm -hmm. but there but I would say I would really encourage people to think about it not as you're getting them started sure it's you're right, like a right. college professor right. and you're taking a class mm -hmm. and this is like and, and hopefully it awakens in them mm -hmm. a, 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 a sense of wanting to explore. Right. It's a lot of it's a lot of data and a lot of tools to mm -hmm. explore with. Right. Yep. So, and then they are the explorers to go out and mm -hmm. continue the journey. Yes. Of their color lives. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, because we're I think if you want a, a, a segment of population who's interested in color, knitters uh, are right. going to be like <laughs> highly engaged yes. in making choices all the time. Yes, which is one of the reasons why I fell so deep into the house of color hole <laughs> because I am a person that loves all color and it was very hard for me to choose which ones to pick. So then it snowballs into buying too many too much yarn that I don't have time to knit and I know I'm speaking to many people who can relate and so and then also it costs a lot of money and it costs a lot of time to knit these things and so if I can know what colors look absolutely best on me I mean mm -hmm. every season that's what we call them gets um their version of a blue like their version of neutrals um their brights mm -hmm. so I mean there are no colors really that are out of reach for folks. Right. It's just figuring out which shades, which tones, um, whether they're clear or muted, uh, just make you pop. So you see you and then you see the lovely thing that you're wearing. Yes. Yes. And I think that they've created some, here's the thing. I just want to state right off cause I am the forever skeptic about everything. <laughs> They've created some formulas in mm -hmm. a way, sure. no different than there are, you know, iambic pentameter, or there's a sonnet, or there's mm -hmm. a haiku. Mm -hmm. They're just forms that maybe are useful to you. There is always free verse, but somebody right. who does free verse, 
is still incredibly intentional about mm. the rules they're breaking. I That's think. a really great point. Yeah. Like in fashion, like rules are meant to be broken, but if you break all of them at once or, you know, or if you're not confident in breaking those rules, I think that's something that um, having a little bit more direction can give people confidence, folks confidence to choose. I mean, specifically for color, maybe colors they wouldn't have gravitated towards. Right. Um, like there's this mint green that Jackie's knitting with that I, I get mm -hmm. as a spring too, and I would have never chosen it. Like mm -hmm. I said, I love all colors, but there are still some that I was not um, weren't in my wheelhouse, so to right. speak. Um, right. That has really it's unlocked a door rather than shut a bunch of other ones for that's sure. how i feel for sure i feel i i feel the same way is you discover some colors and they're like here are some images mm -hmm. that you are that are that are for sure have resonance with what with your face and mm -hmm. hair and eyes you know here are some colors right and then now go play with them right but but it's nice to have that structure of okay I'm gonna start with these yes. foundation colors and then go out from there but how can you start if you don't have the foundation right, colors? exactly and it also creates I think individuality rather mm -hmm. than everyone wanting to knit like the same I am obsessed with mustard yellow love it I know uh -huh. Jackie loves it too uh -huh. but this beautiful canary buttery yellow actually looks better on me than this very popular golden yellow that mm -hmm. knitters love to knit with and I mean I had so many things in my closet <laughs> that were knit with that which there's nothing wrong with that but mm -hmm. I mean the individuality part of it I like knowing well actually this yellow is better for me mm -hmm. um versus following the trends or following someone else what someone else might like because I got stuck in that a lot like I'd see what I liked and I'm like ooh, I want that too but they're not me yeah yeah so so when we when we do a color appointment together, yes, yes. Um, the main I mean I'm I'm going to just you know condense it into the main experience oh sure yes because we left off we go over the color wheel little history I of the main experience to me is just literally reminds me of writing where you hmm. drape yourself in a neutral sort of a cape sheet mm -hmm. and then it's it's you know let's pretend it's blue it's one blue and another blue and you just keep looking and right you yep. know we're comparing and you, you the look different at this drapes. blue and then you look at that blue and mm -hmm. you make a choice and you're doing that over and over mm -hmm. and over right um, and it's based on signs. Yeah. It's based on the underlay of your skin. So that's why we go through lots of different combinations of colors. And, and we can really say it right. it's based, I mean, and I'm happy to agree that it's based <laughs> on signs, but like as a writer, sure. You, like for instance, here, when you, when you're singing and you need to get into pitch, it's a vibration mm. and somebody will give the pitch. And when you get into mm -hmm. that I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I've heard no, it. Yeah. All of a sudden, it aligns, and you feel, mm. oh, they met. You mm. feel it I align. See what you're mm -hmm. And that is science, too, but it mm -hmm. is also very much like perception. Right. And training your perception. So the whole time. Intuition. Yeah. The, the, you're given so many opportunities to align. Mm. Like, oh, does this color kind of like flood you with something? Mm. You know? Right. Give you life. Yeah. And so it's an invitation to. Be aware of that yes. like she's going I mean I you can go and be as passive as you want for right. sure of course right on the spectrum and be like and then carry something around and you know whatever but but we're knitters we're not passive. <laughs> I think we're knitters because we like to make these choices yes right yeah so it's just a new I would say it's a new um, uh, well it's just a new uh, like practice or mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. a new way of observing. So yeah. color, very similar colors, and looking at them and deliberating over them. Yes. We, we did that. Yes, we, we found um, first in the appointment, you, we figure out whether you're cool or warm. Mm -hmm. um, and that just means whether your undertones, it's the, like we work with the fat layer mm -hmm. of your skin, um, not the over tone of your skin, but the undertones. Um, to figure out if it's yellow based or blue based and yellow based of course are the ones that are warmer on the spectrum at the top 
and blue base are the ones at the bottom. And then we just go through and show you maybe um, a couple drapes and because some folks aren't familiar with color, knitters are. So I mean, mm -hmm. like, the few knitters I've knit, they're like, oh yeah, yep, totally, yep, we know, yeah. we can see that, how, yeah. how one color kind of feels a little off. And even when you're doing like color combinations, say like a Fair Isle sweater, you notice like some colors look better together than other colors. So I mean, really that's what we're trying to gather data about. Um, and investigate like I what I love about House of Color for me personally is it's like being a little detective Because um, you're looking for data in the person's features um, Without makeup so you mm -hmm. come without makeup and then the second line after you figure out like warm or cool And then it's are um, you figure out how much contrast a person might need. I'm mm. a spring So I need a lot of contrast to really show up. Um, I kind of fall away in like the autumn drapes, which is, guess what? What I was knitting before, right. because everyone loves those autumn earthy, um, I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of people. Oh yeah. And this was my version of autumn as a spring. Um, there are with you want to pull it out? Sure. There are um, still neutrals that fall into the category of like looking very autumny, like this lovely cinnamon color, and then like I get brighter turquoises, so. But they're just a little bit more vibrant mm -hmm. than, say, like a rust mm -hmm. or like an orangey burnt orange, mm -hmm. um, which I love those colors. But yeah, so. Yes. Well, and uh, this is so beautiful. This is her Soho Square, and I love how you use, you mixed materials, I too. I did. You have Surrey. You have, what all do you have in this here? Is, um, this is Lang Alpaca, so it's a mm -hmm. little bit thicker than the... Um, I mean, it's Surrey, but just like 100% alpaca. I didn't mm -hmm. really realize that when I was buying it. So it has a little thicker consistency. This is the Drops Air, mm -hmm. or not Air, um, alpaca silk brushed. Mm -hmm. And then this was a yarn that my friend gave me, and this was too. So And these are just sock yarns, right? Yeah. Right. I'm not sure what this is. I think this is, oh gosh. I know it's on my Ravelry. What no, but is, it's but just so fun that you have, you yeah. have even... Uh, what are these called? I can't like a hand dyed, pan painted. Mm -hmm. sort yeah, of painted yarn. yarn. Yeah, mm -hmm. you suggested. Or you said, um, "Ooh, spin cycle would be really pretty." Mm -hmm. <gasps> I yeah, that. I love that. It's very nice. Yeah, this one has some var variation. No, can we see just like can we see one side and then the other? Oh, yes, absolutely. What I noticed about the Soho Square is that, oh yeah, I love that. I love that mm -hmm. so much. I just. And so these are all your colors. Yes. Okay. And then let's see. Oh, uh huh. Very nice. And as a spring, so with each of the seasons too, there are some guidelines as to how to wear color as well, which I found very helpful. Um, for spring, because we do get all these lovely bright colors, mm -hmm. we focus on one bright and two neutrals. So this was kind of my exploration of that because mm -hmm. these are neutrals to me, and then this is a bright. So. Because with those bright colors, if you wear, like, you know, I mean, you can do it. Do it. You can wear five colors together, like, as a spring. Who cares? Um, but some people might feel overwhelmed by that. Or, I don't know. Versus as a summer. Mm -hmm. Jackie's a summer. I'm a summer. Um, she gets five blended colors mm -hmm. because they're, it's like a watercolor. It's like a Monet summer. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So So it's like mixing and matching which is totally up her alley which mm -hmm. is amazing so like thinking of like a fair isle sweater versus maybe something that's color blocked mm -hmm. for like a mm -hmm. spring and then winter also because they have those saturated um colors like a spring because they also need a lot of contrast they get a bright a light and a dark so kind of a, mm -hmm. a similar formula and then autumns get five colors as well because they're more the blended season mm -hmm. um like a summer but I will say this is what I took <laughs> from like because she's further along down that right. I do this for my job. Yeah. Um, what I liked about it, for instance, about this, is let's pretend that I really was insisting, like, no, no, I love that color that's supposedly sure. not my color. Then put it right here right. and let the whole roll. rest of this be something that's super flat, like super, this is not. Like in one of your wow colors, that's what we call them. The colors yeah. that are like your top 10, yes. you could drip in it. Like you could wear it from head to toe. So that's the point of, yeah, a wow color. I feel like um, 
is to learn your wild colors mm -hmm. and then you do whatever you want. Like right. anything that, like, because there might be other reasons to like a color besides Absolutely. your skin tone. It might right. be that it reminds you of your grandmother mm -hmm. or something like that. Or, mm -hmm. you know, or it's a skein of yarn that a dear friend gave you mm -hmm. or something like that. Right. And you want to knit with it. Right. And of course you should. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Absolutely. But it's helpful to know this. And I guess that's what I loved. Actually, I found that the the wink and the Soho Square came in at a time that it was so good for this color play. I'll mm -hmm. I'll show you the one I'm working on right now. I'll put this one up here. Oh, good because <laughs> here's another difference in knitting besides like straight up color. Um, often we knit to look at a photograph of the knit garment flat, oh. but the knit garment is worn on us. You sure. know what I mean? And so we so often see something like this Soho Square right here. I find, like, just looking at it, boring. I'm just going to be honest. Boring. Like, and, it's and not then, as dynamic. Well, it just doesn't make sense. And this mm -hmm. color also. Like, this is a complete experiment for me. However. How fun. Yeah, exactly. And But the point is, and I, I think I have this on a, oh, I'm in the middle of a row, so I'll just <laughs> quietly knit. The point is, is what it looks like wrapped mm. around you. And, like, what's interesting to me about this, just going to say, mm -hmm. um, this is... Um, I think this is blush and chalet chic, mm. and we don't have a lot going on in from the lamb and kid. Or yes, from the lamb and kid. This is birdie, but but what I want to say is, no, the light is kind of not showing this well, but it feels very much like a '50s antique store, like the jadeite <sighs> and like all of that cute '50sness. Yes, and then it's this a smidge of like pink in it. Oh, for sure. And then this feels a little bit like. A, you know, oriental rug. So as mm. I knit this, this feels very much like Hotel Tivoli, which is this cute hotel in upstate New York, where it's like very like beautiful antique, you know, uh, sorry, I'm saying carpets, but then yeah. fun, bright, light, whimsical, modern art and pottery and things like that. Mm -hmm. So this has this like little insouciance, but, but as a like flat lay project, mm -hmm. I don't think... I don't think it would translate onto Instagram. Nobody would look at it and go, oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. They would only want it after you um, put it in the setting with the, uh, with the clothes it. and mm -hmm. style it. Mm -hmm. And so we, I, I, this is my big um, interest with you and having you on again and continuing to look at that is I feel like sometimes as knitters we have one point of interest which is the sweater mm. and we don't think of the sweater and the shirt and the pants mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. earrings mm -hmm. and all and I feel like I get a lot of um, kudos for thinking about those mm -hmm. things but I'm not here to just get kudos for me the point is is to yeah. share that and talk about it and right. get one another thinking about it and um, I will just say, like, this fall, I was very intentional about a knit, and I knit it all into my clothing, but my clothing wasn't necessarily perfectly chosen for my season, but my knit was super intentional to mm. fit in with my clothing, and mm -hmm. we might talk about that later, but I want to get to the end of this row. I'm just saying that there is... If, you're, if your outfit l truly is a poem, mm. you know, that is, it's not a poem like a flat thing. It's sure. a poem because it lifts, it, it, like, it communicates, here I am in mm. the world, mm -hmm. and I'm a being, and I want to interact with you. And right, because we're not two-dimensional. Exactly. We are three and multifaceted. I mean, that for, to, to yeah, mm, um, I don't know what I want to say. To bridge that, like mm -hmm. within House of Color, we do style as well, which mm -hmm. I'll be doing in March, which is virtual. I know a lot of people have been messaging me in the knitting world if this is virtual, and it is not because we need to be in person. But there are people all over the U.S. and the world. And yeah. um, there's a knitter in the Netherlands, shout out, um, mm. who I've been talking to a lot um, that is a consultant. 
Um, but anyway, so we do style as well, and we call those points of interest, like she was saying, like to, um, to how to style an outfit versus just wearing your knits or your clothes. Um, so I'm very excited to learn. I know some of that because I've um, had it done for myself. Um, but yeah, it, again, it gives you a starting point, a guideline. Um, again, rules are made to be broken, but you don't know which ones to break if you don't know what they are. Exactly. So, <laughs> do, you, do you mind if I throw oh, this no, on go now? For it. All right, I only have half of it, but um, mm. this one literally, oh, and I'm putting it on. You don't care that the seam is showing, but the seam was showing. Okay, but this one was chosen with Melissa. You came over and looked at my yarns with me. Yeah, I think we hadn't chosen that one, but I oh, like yeah. it. I don't remember what the other one was. It was shoe, which is very oh. beautiful, but I wanted something a little more. Yeah. Okay, so just talk how this, because tell me what you think as, you know. I love it. I love that this is unexpected. Mm -hmm. It's a little pop of color. Like, I can't wait to be able to see it, like, down Coming here. Coming down here. Yeah, and I love the story behind it. Like, mm -hmm. how it makes you feel how mm. it what it represents to you i think that's like another level of intentionality that goes beyond color true so i love i love that but it, these uh, but if you're talking about color well well i just want to add to it because yeah. i really want to say too I, I the this pattern in particular i feel like it allows you to play with values too mm -hmm. like you can either have them have like the main colors be a similar value and this be high contrast right. in or you can have them be like in your example they were the last example you had though oh. there was like it was medium and light right and most of the the your contrast bands kind of was were what pulled it right they pop yeah it's like they were yeah anyways it's yeah. just the way these these proportions interact mm -hmm. you can do values or you can do your seasons or you can do whatever right so this is the surprise but again mm -hmm. I, it, it's just to like synergistically becomes more it's not the flat mm -hmm. thing but you do have to design differently than just what you're used to right it's just yeah. a change a shift right you right. were going to talk about how well, you designed yours oh i was just, just going to show like this has the two like these two are contrasting again i don't know i must like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um the yeah. high contrast in the contrast in bands this, right yeah and my yeah. contrast bands are low right. contrast they're more um yeah low contrast that's the exact way to say it. Mm -hmm. so these are this is another one in my mm -hmm. season yeah yeah but I love, I love when you wrap it on, like, oh, do you yes. mind wrapping it? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I do think it's just, it, it is. It takes on a different life. Every t every way you wrap it differently, mm -hmm. it does different things. There's this way. And then I really love doing it this way so that you get all of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right. Every way too, you get a different color by your face. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about as well when you're mm -hmm. getting um, because maybe like this is a wow color and this is one that's good, mm -hmm. but it's not as good. But then, you know, mm -hmm. you can put that one still in there right? and have it not be right, right by your face, but the little peaks. Right. And that's kind of what she was saying right. too. Like if you're knitting with colors that maybe not, aren't in your season, um, like we in house colors say like the 80, 20 rule, mm -hmm. like for patterns too, mm -hmm. um, if 80% is in your season and 20% isn't like you're good to go. I mean, again, that's like a rule to follow. Um, but again, I think it's a, it's a good starting point for folks because it does help people, um, with choosing how to pick colors that go together. Yes. And, and, um, I just, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I find it fascinating too. When I go, sometimes I just start with the three colors and the fourth one emerges you know, mm. so I put the skein up as I've done halfway and I go, well, I really like those together. I think that yeah. really works. But in my imagination, it's not based on just it's it's just not based on this. It is based on knowing that jadeite pottery looks so great in a very like it kind of bursts when there's very traditional and mm -hmm. wood and whatever and white, like it's from an interior that I know this. Right, which, I mean, I worked in interiors, right. so I, I, absolutely. Or, I mean, or there, there's intentionality, right, There's and branding. 
Yeah. Like there's, there's a ton of intentionality in that as well. Yeah. Like it's not just for business and it's not just for your interiors. Right. It's for your right draping your bodies. Right. But we can play with the rules of value. We can play with the rules of pattern, but having those core colors, your wow colors is such an asset. And so this isn't even getting to silhouette, but one of the things Melissa had me do was try on, well, she didn't make me, we just no, did it together. No, it went just naturally. You started noticing that different shapes and styles mm -hmm. looked good as well as color, which is why House of Color does both, because it really the two together yes. married is what gives you a closet. Yes. I mean, color is a great place to start. Because you can weed out your closet based on color a lot easier than, you know, just mm -hmm. by looking at it and holding your fan up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this is one of the sweaters that you chose. And mm -hmm. it's because I feel, well, you, the fit, it's fitted, mm -hmm. which, you know, I we, tend to... We discovered that it mm -hmm. looked really good on her to have one part of her garment that was a little more fitted. Mm -hmm. Whether that be the neck or the bodice or the arms or all over. Right, right. Fitted and then a good color. Yes. And I will link in below. I know I knitted a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, that was the other fun thing. Most of the yeah. sweaters that I picked were ones that she had knit years ago. Yeah, yeah. And most of my sweaters are actually in my season that I knit, which <laughs> really surprised me. That was very cool to see. Because I, I very much rejected being a summer. And I am, of course, <laughs> I have a quote, which I can't get it for you there, but I am going to. Uh, it's about being, um, I'll find it in a minute. But one of the things we're going to do, and I just wanted to show how fun this was, is do, can we show maybe my wand oh, sure. and the two sweaters that yes. have like really good These silhouettes. The, the color fans. Yeah. This might be fun to just. Yeah. So I have these two sweaters that I adore and I will always wear and adore them no matter what, but they happen to be autumn. And I am like, let's get right off the bat. I love myself in gold and I will continue mm -hmm. to wear it, yeah. but why not take a sweater and I will wear the sweater and I will love it. Cause I personally think like blue and gold is beautiful together. Mm -hmm. And then we also discovered I'm very, you know, whatever, promiscuous when it comes to... <laughs> she knits a lot? No, I just mean, I do have a season, but it was hard to nail it down. I was oh, very she cuspy. Be, yes, we call that cuspy. So she, there are, I mean, it's a spectrum, right? Yeah. The color and warm and cool. And Jackie was a little bit more of an in-betweener, but he, she definitely was cool. Yeah. When we got there, we, we started yeah. seeing it. It just took a little longer. Yeah. She's also my friend, so you know... Yeah. It's harder to drape sometimes the people that you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, or who have opinions on colors. And, and so I, but see, the thing that I wanted to be sure of about doing this is all the good feelings and joy mm. I feel in this. I do not want those to go away. No. At the same time, why not take this? And I'll just go grab it. Well, and even pop it with your true color underneath. For sure. You, you know, or not like, true color, one of your wild, like blues, because blues right. look really good with summer. Exactly. And to pop or wear a wink. Exactly. Sorry, I interrupted no, you. No, but that's I mean, exactly it. Um, like a sock. Yeah, for sure. Like and there are ways, if you still want to dress in your season with a color that isn't in your season, I mean, number one, makeup does that. Mm -hmm. So we talked about that. At the end of your session, we do full makeup. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. House of Color has really, really awesome lipstick. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wearing musk pink today. Oh, I'm wearing I mean, I don't geranium have a lot of it on. red, I think. Okay, I'll put some more on. I think I actually put flamingo on pink on top of geranium red, which is fun too. You know, you can mix and match. Okay, but I just want anyway, to show yes. this. Like, oh, like, okay, this sweater, re knitting this in this. That was another amazing thing that we were kind of coming to the conclusion to where, when we were looking at the silhouettes that looked good on her, the, the um, patterns, like off, obviously she loves this color, but it's also about the sweater, not mm -hmm. as much, not just about the color. Right. So it was like, okay, what are the knits that you could re-knit? Like why always knit something that's the next new thing when For you can go sure, back to, to something. something you love. Right. You know you love it. Right. Like, oh, so good. Right. 
it's got this, it's like, I think it's the smoked grape color. Mmm. Yes. And then, um. So good. Mm. And it blends or harmonizes so well with, with her color fan. This then, is the summer color fan. And then this, I love. I absolutely love it. And it's I love it on. So good. Again, I feel like it's somehow the blue eyes. Like. Yeah. Well, you looked good in a lot of colors. Yeah. Because of being close to warm. Yeah. I think that was the other thing that we noticed. Like, yeah. There are some folks that can just look their best in a lot of colors. Yeah. But it's still really exciting to have. I, I will tell you why. Okay. So then <gasps> I'm redoing it in. Ooh this you know oh my gosh and I can just even see like how oh how good that it's looks. gonna do this it's just it's just gonna be like it's like a step up yes yeah. and and for me I like why not right lipstick's going down um so that's one of the things I'm going to do and one of the things that's fun is to just try on your knits, see what silhouettes suit you. Mm -hmm. And what we, we have a short video where it's very late at night and we go through her 10 <laughs> sweaters and I will, that she chose that she liked of mine. And mm -hmm. then I said on that video, I will style them and put them on Instagram. And I will, I just haven't had a chance of yet. Of course. And I just, I do want to show this too. This is um, what I knit for Rhinebeck. Mm. And I also, this is Meow. And, so good. And um, I knit mm. a Weekender in Meow, etc. But I have to wear this with like a lot of blue around it or mm -hmm. something like that because it, you know, I thought that I absolutely. Well, you can even see how it doesn't harmonize with the fan. Mm -hmm. Like it's definitely an autumn. Yeah, it, yeah. So. I mean, the fact that I have these edges up here helps. Yeah, yes, see. absolutely. Yeah. Because those are in her season. But it doesn't, it, it, it works as a wardrobe piece. It mm -hmm. definitely fits in with my wardrobe in an amazing way. And it's a cute piece. And so I integrated cute. it with like tennies and pins and mm. blazers and hats. And I did all these things. So it looks good for sure. However, um, Imagine if I had done it in a color that also just really mm -hmm. was radiant on mm -hmm. me. Like, I think right. if I'd done it in shoe, which I have, I'm just going to grab it really yeah. quick. I mean, that's a good point. Like, yes, obviously that is a great piece and she can wear that. And if she did it in one of her, like, wow colors, oh, it would be just next level. Like, I think that's a lot of what we're talking about is just kind of taking your knitting to the next level. Ooh. I'm mean, just saying that this this neutral yes. is, you know, better for me. Right, and harmonizes better. And then with like, we'll just put the little edge on. Like, I'll go oh, like that. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's just I can I can totally mm -hmm. see that I this was what I needed to do. Right, and, and this is a cooler neutral than this. this. This is very warm. Yes, and this shoe I loved it when I did it, and now I know why I loved it mm -hmm. when I did it, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, the other point that I want to make, too, is when you do wear your wall colors, you will notice that you don't need quite as much makeup. Uh, like, that's a, a, a goal, too, is um, letting your natural beauty shine. I mean, of course, I'm wearing lipstick. I love lipstick now that I know what lipsticks look good and that I didn't know that it makes your eyes pop. Like, oh. having contrast makes your eyes pop. Like, okay, hello, love mascara, love eye makeup, but if you really want your eyes pop, wear a lipstick. What? My mind is blown. Like, 38 years it's taken to know that. But anyway. Um, That's fun. Yeah. So, but, you know, if you're wearing colors that aren't quite suited to you, you might need to wear more makeup to really... Mm, like, if mm -hmm. Jackie was wearing winter colors. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. It's okay. Um, I'll show you the winter fan. They're much more high contrast. This is what Amy Palco was. Mm -hmm. And she might need to wear more makeup to really show up in these colors mm -hmm. so I mean not that she has to but just it, it might be it, it's something to notice as, as mm -hmm. folks are going throughout their day and wearing different colors like do you feel like you are competing with that color do you feel like you need to wear more makeup to be able to be seen like do you see the color more than you oftentimes people say to folks oh that color looks great on you I love that color 
but it isn't necessarily one that looks good on their face. It's just mm-hmm. a color that that person really likes mm-hmm. because we, like you were saying before, we view the world from our perspective. And so like mm-hmm. that mustard yellow color, I could say to Jackie, oh my gosh, I love that color on you, but it's likely because I like that color or it's a color that's vibrant that not a lot of people are wearing. So it makes a statement. I mean, and that's not always the case. Sometimes the color really does look good on someone. Right. But um, well, it's just things to think about. Yeah, you were here. I'm going to show one more knit that you were here for. Ooh, I was here for it. The, the oh, yes. Amy Palco's Gallus, the, the one that Charlene knit for me, when I made the original Soho Square, I just was so in love with the palette that we decided to keep using it and go from a four color palette to a five color palette. Mm-hmm. And so she took, um, you know, the original Soho Square palette and added gloaming. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, Gloaming is one of my colors, so this is the one that I'm choosing to get a sweaters quantity in. Oh, yay! I'm so excited yes. for you. <laughs> and Dean is also one yes. of my colors. Yep. So that's mm, why the Soho, I love Dean. Mm. I love Dean. I could knit everything in Dean. And these two colors are not, but they work in the Soho Square for me right. because they're, they're accents. Yeah, they're complementary in uh, in the sense of as knitters would like contrast and um, interest in their knitting. Mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. sure. And one of the things that I was, this is not technical, but she has these silks called drapes mm-hmm. and they're so fun and they're not used in this way, but at the same time, these are some of the sweaters that she chose, and I'm just curious if you could find the drape oh, sure. that corresponds with the sweater, sort of more or less, that you chose, like that says, oh, so this was um, a good night day pattern. I mean, I know. Like, it's just, you know, it's just so, that see? color, and it's I mean, if so we're talking fun. about, like, colors, like, again, Jackie is a summer um, in a perfect world, she would have five or more colors. Right, and I do in here. Like, oh, so good. And there's this even is like a little, million, yeah. Of there's this, even the little, the little yellow. Yeah, and this is why this sweater works so well. Is it, see how it's so many colors draped together? I mean, this was like eight strands. So for a, to be very intentional mm-hmm. as a s- summer, it could be really fun to knit these bulky, sweaters this is like knitting into your season with five strands of yarn mm-hmm. and just blend them all and then you would be amazing like oh my gosh that's I a love that. very house of color two knitting technique yes and for autumns they would also shine in that well for, for me as a spring it would be more like three colors right right like and a bright with two neutrals mixed in but i love that She said sorry that she's going off camera. <laughs> and see, I'm a spring, and do you see how these colors, like, they're not as good on me as they are Jackie. Like, look at. Yeah, no, I love them. I so love good. Them. Me. Okay, so this that I just knit is, an, is primarily autumn, mm-hmm. and it's doing that autumn thing of blending so nicely together Mm -hmm. and being delicious in the blend and i will keep wearing this of course Mm -hmm. you know but for sure like i but it's not um well, how fun to do a spring version right. of that for, for a myself. summer one. Yes. I mean, a summer yes. one. Yes, yes, so, yes. Okay, let's just That do... has been really exciting. I will interject that in re-knitting um, some things that, like, mm. the Saturday mm-hmm. shrug, and I re it in some spring colors. Like, I did a little pop of, for this, two colors, because why not? What? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and then did this that kind of, like, hair just on you. Yeah. And... and I would say, I mean, I'm thrilled because, of course, I've knit a million shrugs. I actually have, I have a new Sunday shrug stripe sequence that I'm in love with. And I did it, and I did it in fall colors. And I, of course, am waiting to reveal it to the world because I want to do it in my colors and show you. I don't want to show you, like, 
I don't want I want to show you what I'm learning both about the stripe sequence and color. That looks amazing on you. Yay! It looks I mean it so is so good on it you. It just makes the knits more even more special. Like mm -hmm. I've knit so many of these and they were all in autumn colors. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. As you're knitting, I mean I'm giving some knits away. I'm taking apart some of my knits. And then I'm I'm holding on to some knits. These are heirloom pieces, and something that House of Color also says is never get rid of your heirloom pieces. Like mm -hmm. for a summer, we say wear silver jewelry. If you've got gold ring, who cares? Like right. I mean, you can mix metals or and just I'm totally not embracing. That. <laughs> Just so you know. Which is totally fine. I'm like, no thank you. I'm like, I'm going to sneak, I'm going to pop some silver jewelry in the mail to her. And she I mean, play. I really tried, though, to be like, I because this has a little more pewtery feeling yeah. to it. And so yeah. I was trying. I mean, whatever. You mm -hmm. look great. It looks great. Thanks. Thanks. Um, But so like with this, we're, I'm not advocating for people to like throw away their clothes or get rid of them or like change over their whole closet. Like that's not sustainable. And it's also just like not good for the environment, not good for our wallets. But I think moving forward, like when we're selecting new sweaters to knit um, or new pieces of clothing. Or new winter some... coats. Yes, exactly. I should show my winter coat. <gasps> yes. I will because it's up here. Okay. okay. I want to just quickly show yes. this and something that suits my personality. So. This, mm. I loved this, Beyond loved it so much. So cute. And it's funny because, um, oh yeah, she's gonna be like, yep, okay. I don't, you know, I didn't know why it worked though. I just yeah. loved it and I based it off of Cezanne paintings. So <laughs> I loved those. <gasps> I love that even more. Yeah, I went Aww. to the Cezanne exhibit with my son and came back and Aww. did this. Um, but I just, it's funny because I keep stumbling into my color. I mm -hmm. literally bought the blazer that I bought that the Saturday Shrug originally came out mm -hmm. with. That, I, is it like navy pinstripe kind of? That's the Saturday Shrug. I'm gonna put the blazer on. Okay. Sorry everybody. <laughs> no, this is so fun. You guys, like I have so much fun doing this and like Jackie, she was skeptical. And now, like I, I bought this thinking, what am I buying this for? <laughs> you know, I just was like, this is so, but this is like, if it's yeah. right in, she's, yep. I mean, we don't, she doesn't, I mean, you don't have to get out your fan every time. It's like a burgundy. I think though it's helpful to, for people to see. Okay. Like, and then you see on me, this is not, I'm yeah. not summer. Like, I feel like it's down in, um, where is like it? Almost like that. Yeah. Or. It's, it's like almost of, brown burgundy. It's kind of like brown burgundy musky pink. I don't mm -hmm. know. Well, yeah. I, so that here, but here's it the doesn't, point. It's right. not on this. Right. It's not an exact match. And that's okay. Because you get a quarter of the colors of the universe. This is a guide. And to help you harmonize your colors. Does this go with this? Right. Why, yes, it does. Right. So that tells you you're Oof, fine. And I like it with this and this. See? Right. Look at one, two, three. Your lip is yeah. four. Mm -hmm. Your earrings oh. are five. Oh, interesting. <sighs> Fun. Yeah. And... I had a point about this, oh, but I don't... No, I totally don't remember. I was also going to point out okay. some colors do work for both seasons. Okay. Like, that is um, a thing because, again, color is a spectrum. So, like, this little purpley color, um, it's really close to hyacinth, which is in both spring and summer. So, I'll show you my spring fan. So, this is spring... And you can kind of see holding it up to that, how it harmonizes with that. Um, and I get hyacinth because it's in the center of, and so does, look at that, so does summer. So there's also that, not to get hung up about that, some people do. Um, it just means that, you know, we meet in the middle on that color, which is kind of fun because Jackie, one of her sweaters that I picked in her top 12, which was supposed to be top 10 and I couldn't pick 10, I picked 12. Right. Um, but it was a color in Trippy. That's Trippy from oh, yeah. um, Birdie, uh, from uh, the Lamb and Kit. Uh, and one of her sweaters was in that because it really looks stunning on her and it actually looks good on me too. So that's just something to note. I don't know why I'm coming over here with this, but I'm just saying this is one of my favorite ready-to-wear sweaters. Ooh. And hello. So cute. Right. Okay, I'm going to do it again because, right, it's okay. fun, right, to see. Right? You know, like. It's like yeah. that color. Yeah. And so this green, I just, it's just funny because I intuitively knew it, but it's nice to have it, like, 
validated. Validated. Yeah. yeah. And I could do this, like, we could just, like, I had, I wanted to bring this one, too. Because this one, I always, like, I'll just go like this for you guys. Mm. Like, it always felt really nice. Like, mm. this is not how I would wear it, but, but, <laughs> but you know. Super jacky. But, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I mean, you know I actually yes. probably would, like, yes. figure yeah, out a way. Yeah, no, to... it's very preppy, which I think for sure, I don't, I haven't done style yet, like I said, uh-huh. but classic is definitely in one of her words. You get two words. I'm natural romantic. Mm-hmm. I'm curvy and like the flowy things and she it's more tidy oh. but again I don't know everything mm-hmm. about that but definitely right. classical right be in your words so let's rope it back in because yes. I literally like I don't want to bore you with me going through my closet and going look at this but it's look fun at this. Right? right you know but um knowing some wow colors yes really nice to know again I already had this in a wow color Mm. and um, um, and we want to be able to get sweater quantities in our wow colors right that's the goal there's a wow color right up by your face this is the pearl soho bandana color which I love Mm, mm mm-hmm and I'm gonna just throw this out here I mean wouldn't it be fun if if people if we like got a, a like an Airbnb Right and had talk. right and just knit and took turns doing color analysis and play with like you know bring I don't know like I've had friends who've had yarn swaps sweater swaps oh. all those things you oh could do that gosh. too like all you could it. bring a couple sweater quantities I would just I'm gonna oh, you. Bless you. This is, she it's all the knits. Me. It's all the knits. It's the old knits that have resurfaced. Yes, exactly. No, I did. I dusted before you came this morning oh, too, and I'm allergic to dust. So. Me too. Oh, look at us. Okay, so that Those would be fun. Numbers. But the invitation. Let's let's scale back. Obviously, yes. if you live in Madison, come see Melissa House of Color for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. If you don't live in Madison, you could look for somebody in your area. Yeah, absolutely. Or if we do this retreat. Mm, wouldn't that be fun? You could. So, yeah, if you're interested, why don't you put that in the comments yeah. below? Because how hard can it be? Right. It we, would be in Madison. Like it would West be in Side. Madison. Right. And, in my territory. There are different territories right. for the consultants. And too. it would be like... Yeah, well, we're not going to plan it on no, here. Right. Just tell us if you're interested, sounds because really it fun. sounds like it could be really fun. Yeah. Um, and I still do sell my jewelry. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I do have um, tassel earrings, not these yet, but um, the painter tassels in silver. I was obviously oh. inspired by doing House of Color, which I was like, I'm going to give Jackie a pair of silver. Oh, um, and with, with spring? With your spring colors. Oh, with my wow color. Yeah. <gasps> I haven't fully dived into that because I'm starting, you know, starting this business up and trying to really get it going. Um, but I think the marriage there of my jewelry, especially the tassel earrings, um, there's a lot of potential there. And yeah, any yarn shops that want to like connect about doing house of color, like colored yarn, that mm-hmm. would be also really cool. Mm-hmm. I would love, love, love that. Um, yeah, there are just, there's a lot of possibilities. I feel like with my background in interiors and jewelry and color, I used to do color puncture, which is like acupuncture, but uses colored light instead of needles. Oh. I know. So it just, it just fits to yeah. do this as the next stage. For sure. I'm very um, excited I love for you. style, but I've never, you know, I don't know. I've never taken the leap to like work at shop up or anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think anyway. it would be very fun to formulate some, you know, guidelines for us to really lean into if we're going to be making things, make sure that we are, we always say this, that we're wearing them, that we're styling them, that they express ourselves rather than um, express somebody else, mm, which mm-hmm. I, I, I've said this before, but it's just like, absolutely want it to be clear because I do this to you so I can say with great um, transparency (laughs) I will intentionally put something together think about it buy things for it spend hours creating an image and plop it up there and you get to see it 
in one second and mm -hmm. go, oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. But there were hours and hours and days and days and weeks of thinking to put that image together to create that I want that for mm -hmm. you. To create the moment. Yeah, and, and what actually what you want more than that that feeling that you got from that image is you want to be able to do that in your own life mm -hmm. for yourself. And I want that for you and so does right. Melissa. Yes, it's empowering. Yeah. Yeah. And to, for you to show up. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, exactly. Being a mom, I have a four and a seven year old. I mean, and at many stages in life, like I think I was hiding behind black. I was hiding behind colors that made me disappear into the background. And I think this is like my testimony, like why I am so passionate about it. Because, oh my gosh, I get like the brightest colors. Mm. And it, it has given me so much confidence to show up in those colors and just a new view of what I was doing to myself in my own life. Like how I was showing up or not showing up. Like not being in the photos with my kids as much. Mm. Oh um, wow! And okay. now that I know these different things about myself, it's just again, it's more data, but it's also self discovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, I also I just I forgot. I remembered I wanted to show my winter coat. Oh yes. Because you make these big oh, yes. investments. Yes, like you all, you a bunch of you probably have black winter coats, and that's totally fine. I have um, black winter coat. Yes, I have black winter coats. And one thing in the meantime, before you buy, go out and buy a new one in your own colors, just wear a scarf that's in your season. Because again, this is the cameo. Mm -hmm. um, but when you do want to buy a new one, right? how cool that you get the option to buy one in your season right. and really be spectacular. She stopped by the Madewell event and <laughs> someone was like, I thought they worked here. And then, <laughs> and then she, and they say that to me too, you know, cause we're like, we do look a little bit like we could work there. Um, and, and she was like, well, and we said, no, she works at the Twigs. And mm -hmm. like, oh yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Look at your outfit. Yes. So this is from Twigs, but I just feel that the sheen mm. and the color mm. lends itself to far more silver you know, and, oh. <laughs> I mean, her eye is just, like, again, just to help people visualize, mm -hmm. like, how, again, I don't think this color is in her fan. Right. Um, but we know it looks good. And, like, right. her eyes pop, her hair, like, mm -hmm. everything is just brighter. Mm-hmm. Right. And creamy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And for me, I wanted a neutral, but I wanted mm -hmm. a neutral that wasn't black. Right. So, I don't know. And I just... I, I felt like I was very resistant to silver, but I feel like the sheen on this goes towards metallics yeah. and towards silver, so it's s close to silver. Again, yeah. I you if, you if you've been around here, you know I'm not going to just obey. <laughs> Which no one should, right? right? It's about what it brings, like, does it serve you? Right. Like, is right. it serving you? Right. Is and, it enhancing your life? Right. And then, um, you know, I made... I made a little whatever. What are those things called? Balaclava. Oh yeah, ba, ba, uh, I always, I always or, say, yeah, balaclava. 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 Okay. I don't know. Not a balaclava. But, but I, I know. I always <laughs> say it wrong. I don't have it up here. But you know, if I wore that, you could see mm, that it would work. Mm -hmm. Do you? Want, um, you never mind. Go get it? Um, no, but okay. I just wanted to say. Or um, even if you had like a. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I have, I got hat material. So, to, I yeah. Like this color, because that's one of your colors. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, we did an experiment with her wearing this this way mm -hmm. versus wearing it right. this way. Like, and, like, look right. at that. Oh, oh, no. Terrible. <laughs> well, I have this one. Sorry. Oh, yes. This is the sweater oh, that you're sweater. talking about. The trippy sweater. Stunning. And I think Mitch looks really similar to this, right? Uh, is Mitch... Yeah, I have uh, I have Aster, too. But oh, okay. I didn't... Like, again, when when I first knit this... Look at this. I love this. Um, <laughs> I was like, I don't like purple. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. But when I, Caitlin knit in trippy, uh -huh. and um, I put on her... Wanderlust Knitter has this thing called the Big Fluff, and I put it on, and I was like, oh... So they kept being accidental, and you know what I, you know what I'm appreciating about this is they were accidental, and I do them anyways. But I do them with a sort of sense of, 
I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to because it, somehow it seems to work. Oh. And then the things that I were like, this is for sure what I like. <laughs> it, I don't know. It's all very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So. And how cool that now you know, again, like the validation. Yeah. How many, just, just let me throw this out here. How many people could you drape in a weekend? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. Um, there are a couple other associates in Madison, oh. Lisa. My, oh, um, so they could come yeah, too? they could come too. Okay. So we could do, I mean, I'm doing a party of eight with Lisa and we're doing it in four hours. Okay, because when you're, when, <laughs> well, when you're, well, when you have knitting though to do combined with that and you come down, it reminds me of like a Okay, ideally, let's go to Sundara Spa, oh. right, and get a room. And oh, my room. gosh. Yeah. So to answer that question, okay. each it takes about two hours okay. to do a color analysis. Okay. But when you have more than one person, I mean, you're it's like a group. So yeah. it doesn't take, like, two hours per person then. Sure. It's, it's maybe, like, you know, right. an hour. And plus two. do you want to say how much the service costs? Uh, so people can, can go plan. onto my website. Oh, they yeah. can go into yeah. the, Okay, perfect. Yeah, they can go onto my uh, website. And usually then, it's like 250 to 300 for a, uh, for a full session. Yep, full and you get session. a fan. You do. You get a fan, you get a little color and you book. you get a makeover. Yes, you do. You leave with a full face of makeup. Our lipsticks are around like $25 each. Like they're not, it's not, it's like high-end makeup. Like it uses U European makeup standards versus mm -hmm. the U.S. It's made in the U.S. but uses their standards because they ban a few more um uh, ingredients than we do like they ban 1300 we have 13 in the u.s um but yeah it's a it's it's a great value you would learn um hair color you can base your nail colors off of it oh wow right you can just take your fan into the nail studio and pick your color oh um, oh god and my lipsticks <clears throat> Well, actually, my go-to lipsticks are always in the right shade. They always have been. It's so funny. <laughs> and I've always been like, I don't know why I like this, but I do. I'm just going to wear it. Yeah. But the ones I want are always in the wrong shade. <laughs> and I have a collection of those. Well, and that, I mean. That's okay. Give them to Lily. Yeah. But I still. <laughs> Lily should By the way, I'm going to, again, fingernails to me are a great place for me to express any fucking color I want. Sorry. <laughs> Just going to say it, right? And you do that. Yeah. I am not here to tell you not to do something. <laughs> right. It's more like a guide. And, right. And knowing, An like, I mean, Amy, she, like, we discussed, like, where to put blush mm -hmm. on your face. And, um, like, the, the seasons that get brown mascara versus black. So there's mm -hmm. some makeup education there, mm -hmm. which I which never got. Which is very got. fun. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's really good. And, it's just so good. And, like... It's worth it in my life. <laughs> not only, like, that, but, like, where to highlight and things yes. like that. Because yes. maybe you don't use her illuminator, but you have it. And you right. go, oh, now I know. It goes here and here. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Makeup is not, like... You don't have to buy it. But I do think that most people want the lipsticks. Because it is hard to match up lipsticks afterwards versus House of Color has their own makeup. Mm -hmm. And so it's tailored to the mm -hmm. the colors in your season. Yes. Um... Which is a real benefit. Like, why do the work? Like, one of someone else's clients had gone to Sephora and brought their fan and was like, okay, I need colors in this. And they're like, like, they're trying to match one. They're like, why didn't you just buy them from... <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's... But mm -hmm. everyone, you do what you gotta do. Yeah, for sure. And that's an add-on. Yes, of course. Yes. Yep. The lipsticks yep. are. Uh -huh. But the fan itself is like $90 retail. So, like, in thinking about that, in terms of... Um, how much a color appointment costs. Um, I mean, that's a third of the appointment. Well, the appointment sounds like a couple sweater quantities. Yes. But, you know, so I, I'm just <laughs> saying that if you look at it that way. Right. To then know what your best colors are to have confidence that you're knitting colors that look good and therefore you will wear. Because that's the other thing. I mean, when you've amassed so many knitting projects, like finished objects, which ones do you gravitate towards? Maybe that's another thing to like be... Mm -hmm. I'm um, thinking about as homework too. Like, which ones do you gravitate toward? Well, and you can literally. I'm sorry, but you can use that fan as a tool. Like, if you're gonna knit a Soho yeah. Square or yeah. Gallus, I, you can yeah. get your fan out and get four colors off of that, or right. five colors right. off of that, and you know it's gonna work if you're right. not secure about it on your own. It helps with the overwhelm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that Absolutely. could be another tool to use. So, anyways. 
Well, and it's a great conversation starter in the yarn shop to be like having your fan. Oh, out. like it's a good connector. We went to Firefly Fibers, um, Amy and I, the other day. Hi, Lisa. Yeah, <laughs> and we had so much fun, and now Elisa wants to get. Yes, her we want to do a pop up there, so we'll see. It's in the works. Yeah, but she's yeah. getting her colors. And done I just want to come along as a groupie, like to you be should. there. You I'm should. like, you know, I can you should. play along. And it's fun doing groups too, because I mean, there are pros and cons to both. Like, it's nice having your own individual time. Like I tell people, this is your time to just relax. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to talk to me. Like it's kind of like going to the hair salon. You're just like for a couple hours. You are just chilling. And, and but you do notice things and it's fun but anyway um but it's also really fun to do it with friends or your partner like we've mm. had couples come in um like for their anniversary my instinct was to leave amy and you to yourselves sure because i like it was sacred yeah because i yeah. feel it's very intimate and that's why i feel yeah. like it pairs so well with the knitting retreat yes. because I, I, well there's so much to say, but you have so much good co things to discuss and reflect mm -hmm. on after one of these appointments right. in your knitting. And then you can come out of your thing and mm -hmm. talk, start going through your Ravelry and talking to mm. other knitters about... <coughs> I mean, it's so much more than project. just color. Yeah. It's so much more than yeah. just color. Well... Thank you so much for coming on the channel. Thank you I'll plop in for having me. The videos that from the other day, they're not really House of Color. They're just me like trying on every sweater ever and the 10 that she chose. Yeah. And then look for them on Instagram. But below, um, comment below if you would like to come to Madison. <laughs> <laughs> and or see us and yeah. knit with us and get your colors done. Yeah. I mean, and we have nothing organized at this no. point, but let's find out if you're interested. Right. And, um, I, yeah, and thank you so much. And, of course, I'm going to put a plug in for myself, too, that I do yeah. think the Soho Square and the Shrugs are special. I love the cinch now, how it has the four colors, so it has that dynamic mm -hmm. play situation. I can't wait. I've already got one in, in the... I just... I couldn't think they're just really excellent vehicles for you to look good and you to play with color. They're not like masterpieces of like intricate whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Again, that's the one point of interest. I feel like what they do is they play so well with um, other knits. I would say, I don't have a metaphor, but... <clears throat> color so good all right let's end with a poem too i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna pick this one so we started with or should we end with the same no i opened already so it's to aphrodite by sappho <laughs> why not end with a poem <laughs> this is so like sitting here in my winter coat <laughs> with <laughs> okay leave crete aphrodite and come to this sacred place encircled by apple trees, fragrant with offered smoke. Here cold springs sing softly amid the branches. The ground is shady with roses from trembling young leaves. A deep drowsiness pours. In the meadow, horses are cropping the wildflowers of spring. Scented fennel blows on the breeze. In this place, Lady of Cyprus, pour the nectar that honors you mm. into our cups, gold, and raised up for drinking. Ah, oh, cheers. Mm -hmm. Pour the nectar that honors you into mm. our cups. That's color. That Did you just pick? Yeah, I just randomly, randomly picked that. Yep. Um, Sappho translated by Jane Hirschfeld. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, to really take yourself seriously as a sacred being that's temporary and mm -hmm. might as well just... In, enjoy that 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 opportunity of being alive and being there is no right color there is no mm. right way or wrong way to do this but just how to enhance mm -hmm. what you have yeah and help mm -hmm. yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah get so, rid of some of the overwhelm yeah absolutely lots of things are overwhelming. oh i have so much to go through in my closet etc <laughs> but but right Another now time. yeah for right now it's nice to have like oh Right, that knowing may, what to knit in the future. That's why that works. I think what you're doing is giving names to things that maybe we felt but oh. didn't understand. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking words to mm -hmm. the feeling. Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us and thank you for coming thank on the channel. Thank you so much, Jackie. Yay. Yay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.